Oh, hello everybody. Welcome to Life Wax, where we try to make your life a little bit more livable. Now, we're going to change the format of the show up just a little bit today, because it's a very special episode. I figured, with Thanksgiving right around the corner, we should do a cooking episode right here on Life Wax. But, what are we cooking? You guessed it, crack! As in crack cocaine. Kids, don't make crack. I'm going to let you know right now, this episode is for educational purposes only. Crack is super illegal, it's super addictive, it's a poison to the community, just don't do it. Though, holidays are coming up pretty soon, and I've heard crack does make a lot of money. Probably don't make crack though. So what are some of the things that we're going to need for crack cocaine? Well, let's get the ingredients out right here. Of course, we're going to need some uh, cocaine itself. Which, let me be very honest with you, this is not real cocaine. One, it's really illegal. Two, it's really expensive. Mostly it's expensive. So instead of that, we're going to be using uh, flour in lieu of cocaine. But for our intent and purposes, let's just pretend that it is cocaine. So one baggie of cocaine. Next, we're going to need baking soda. We've all heard hip-hop songs. We all know a rapper or two who's come up cooking cocaine in the kitchen. Whipping it through the glass, as they say. Whoop, 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 whoop. So, of course, we're gonna need cocaine here. I've got Arm & Hammer. I don't know if there is another brand, but this is the tried and true version of baking soda. Then we're gonna need water. You could probably use sink water, but I'm gonna use distilled water. This is Texas Spring Water from Hill Country Fair. That's an H-E-B brand. And that's in the Texas store. So these are all the so these are all the ingredients you need to make crack. It's not going to be very hard at all. Now that we've gathered our ingredients, let's go ahead and start measuring and prepping them all. So first of all, when you get real cocaine, it's going to come in a rock form. Don't get confused with crack rock. It's just the way they package it, I believe, that makes it really hard, and you have to crush it up. Uh, the easiest way I think would be if we were to get a rolling pin and just kind of roll out the crack and just, you know, get it. What you want is a nice fine powder of cocaine. You know, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to be cooking with rocks. We're going to be making rocks. So, you know, just make sure you get it all nice and powdery and just break it up real good. So you want a real powder consistency of it. Then once you got that ready, Go ahead and get our uh, scale out here. Clear it out. And we're going to want to measure out 28 grams of cocaine. Let's go ahead and scoop it in there. And as you see, I spilled a little bit here. Don't worry, with cocaine, there's never any, it's never wasted. Now what we're gonna wanna do here is measure out 10 grams of the baking soda. So let's go ahead and just get a little spoon in here, see if I got one that fits in there. Water, we're just going to add it as needed in the pot. So we don't have to worry about measuring it out right here now. Uh, speaking of the pot, why don't we move the show along to the stove. Now that we're here at the stove area, let me show you what we're going to need for this part. A medium-sized saucepan. A Pyrex cup. Again, you've heard rap songs. Of course, our ingredients. Something to stir with. I'm gonna be using a wooden spoon, a cooking pan, 
then we'll need this for later. And parchment paper or a cookie sheet. Again, this will go together. We'll use this for a later step, but just make sure you have it ready and available. So what we're gonna do first of all, is go ahead and fill up the saucepan with water. You can get this from the sink. It doesn't have to be distilled or anything like that. Just gonna wanna fill it up about halfway. That's, that should be good. And let's go ahead and bring this to a boil. And while that's doing its thing, we can come over here and start mixing our ingredients. So pretty much what you're gonna wanna do here is just make sure they all get in there. Baking soda in there. Let's go ahead and give this a little stir up. You know, get those, get those mixed up, real blended together really nicely. I wish I had a little assistant here. They could uh, lick the spoon when I'm done. Good. Now, let's go ahead and add the water. Oops, lost my spoon there. <laughs> we just want to get it damp. We don't want to we don't want to soak the product. We just want to get it nice and pasty. More water to that. Right, like I said, you just want a good paste. A, little, a really good pasty consistency. You can see it's pretty good. I'm gonna try to get all the little bumps and lumps out of it. I'm gonna make it as smooth as possible. That should be pretty good right there. So you just wanna make sure you get it all nice and cleaned off in there. You don't wanna waste too much product. That's all right, we're gonna be using the stirring spoon again once we get to this water boiling. And while it's boiling, let me take some time to tell you about NordVPN. Are you... <laughs> I'm not sponsored by NordVPN, by the way. But I'm practicing. Actually, while this water's boiling, that'll give us a good chance to set up the next step. So, let's go ahead and get our cooking sheet here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of parchment paper on it. Okay, that should be good. Just want to get it, get it in there where it's laying nice and flat. And again, we'll just put this off to the side. Now that it's at a, a rolling boil, let's go ahead and put the Pyrex in there. You can just use this little handle on the side to uh, put it on the side of the, the saucepan here. And while it's cooking, you're going to want to continuously stir it. It's going to be that's part of the whole process. You know, just make sure you stir it up real nice. popping on me there. Alright, so you just want to keep stirring it until it starts losing most of the moisture that we are that we put in there earlier, all that spring water. And, uh, oh another funny story. Again looks like a nice uh, nice kitchen. It's a really nice house. You know my parents they, uh, they bought it a few years back and they've just been working on it, fixing it up as they can. But uh, a few blocks down the uh, street there is an actual crack house where they probably do this for real. Like Taylor, Taylor, Texas, mind you. It's a, it's a real mixed city. You got some people who are, you know, upper class church going people and whatnot. Then you've got a lot of meth heads. We're, we're known really well for meth capital of Texas. Every uh, five or six years, they always do a, a little meth bust. They just round up all the meth dealers and cookers and whatnot. So, you know, fun little fun little trivia about uh, Taylor, Texas. Also the birthplace of Tex Avery. Huh? Fun, fun fact, huh? This is actually looking really good. I, I think if we had real cocaine in there, we'd be really close to having actual crap. You can tell the stirring motion is because you don't want the bottom to get too hot. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to burn your crack. That'd be pretty bad. Waste the product right there. Just want to get it heated up so you get, I guess there's a chemical reaction going on here with the baking soda and the cocaine. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know too much about 
all that. Oh yeah, look, see? It's already starting to get a little, a little hard in there, a little, uh, starting to get more solid. I think that's gonna, I think that's the actual crack. Hardening up on the sides here. Oh man, that's that's a good crack, I think. Yeah, and you just want to go ahead and just stir it up real nice until I think you get all the liquid out of there. And that's pretty damn close to being what I think we want it to be. So let's go ahead and take this off the boil. And uh, let's move on to the next step here, which is uh, let's get that cooking pan we got out earlier. And let's start spooning all this, this product that we have here right into there. Put it right there on that cooking sheet and scrape the sides of this Pyrex here. Not gonna lie, this smells really good. Like pizza dough. <laughs> is this the ingredients to pizza dough? I'm not sure, I'm not a chef. Did I make, did I make something? Did I make something good? Let's scrape all that. Now let's uh, go ahead and like, smush it on there. Make it nice and even as well, as even as possible. Now there might be, there might be a better tool for this. This thing? I don't know what it is. Let's try it. I think it's a cake making tool. My mom actually is a pretty gosh dang good cook. Uh, she used to work at a bakery and uh, so she knows how to build cakes. But you know, she's also raised, I was raised on her food so it's pretty good. Uh, I always feel bad when I have a girlfriend and she tries to cook food for me because I'm gonna say like I'm pretty spoiled when it comes to like, people who know how to use spices properly. Uh, so whenever they try to cook, I'm just like, mm. I, in my head, I'm thinking, like out loud, I'm like, mm, this is pretty good. In my head, I'm thinking, mm, this could use flavoring. So yes, oh, like this is working really good. I'll just keep that, smash that down to a nice little product there. Then once we got that going, what we're going to want to do is take this pan and put it in the freezer. So let's go ahead and move to the freezer and we should see how that looks. Alright, so let's go ahead and make some room in this uh, freezer for, the, for our crack. We'll move the ice over. Luckily, for some reason, they keep it in a Ziploc bag. Okay. I haven't lived with my parents in a while, so it's weird to see how they've changed it up. Put our pan in here. Get a little treat for myself. Hey, ice cream sandwich. Okay, and then we'll come back and check on the crack in about 30 minutes, I say. We should be good. So get ready for action. I'm gonna get yourself a single-edged razor blade and just cut into the crack. Now I've never seen a crack rock in my life. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I just assume like like this maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, find yourself a crack. Oh <laughs> no, actually don't find a crack. They'll lie to you. And they're like, oh yeah, no, no, they're supposed to be twice that big. 
you know, find yourself like a crack dealer if you're really interested in making crack, and uh, you know, ask ask him for advice, or just don't say, or just don't make crack, don't sell crack at all. Either way, it's up to you, but it's up to you. It's your decision. This video was for educational purposes only, and nothing I did here should be considered an intent to distribute or actively wanting people to make crack. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not uh, tempting you, or I'm not attempting to make it myself. I'm just doing it just to show you how you could, if you, or you know how it's done. But yeah, that's how to make crack. I was about to wash this uh, this container. I had all the stuff stuck in there. I was like thinking to myself, like that's a lot of good crack I'd be wasting if this was real crack. I was like that'd be all flaky and whatnot. Then I realized that's what the wrappers call the crumbs. That's the crumbs. You could have scraped this up and like just give the like, give little crumbs to crackheads. Like hey, wash my car. You could give them the crumbs. Like this wouldn't make you much money. Like you could sell it, but the crackheads want the rock. I <laughs> learned something! Yeah! This is an educational episode! And, you see, I spilled a little bit here. Don't worry, with cocaine, there's never any... It's never wasted. I forgot his flower.